Okay, hey, we're back. So um, today we're going to go over the solution to the phone book application, which was assigned last period. So here it is. Uh, I got two versions of it. One of them uses Pickle and the other one doesn't. This is the one that does not use Pickle. So here are some functions that I've made. Load, save, add, delete. But before we look at those, and there's another one called find, or you could call it lookup. Before we look at those, um, let's take a look at the main program. So the main program is essentially starting at line 39. There it is. And essentially what we're doing the first line is we're we're calling load and we're assigning it to D now let's go take a look at the load function and the load function is the first one right at the top line 3 so um, the first thing I do here is this is kind of like a chicken and egg problem because if you've run this program before and the um, and you've already saved a phone book file, okay? So remember, uh, when we run this, we're gonna have to run this on the command line. So we can't just hit F5 here because we're using sysargv, right? So the first command line argument is gonna be the file that we check for, and if it exists, we're gonna open it. So this first line, line four, is if os.path.is file and then sysargv1 which, by the way, is not an absolute path. Essentially, it's just checking if that file exists in the directory you're in right now. So the, in order for this to work properly, you cannot put the Python file and your phone book file in different directories because I don't have a path here. The sysargv1 will simply be the file name. So it requires the phone book file to be in the same directory as the Python file that we're looking at right now. Um, it, yeah, and by the way, also, it doesn't check if it's in the correct uh, comma-separated value format. Um, it just checks if the file exists. And if it does exist, well, then we go down to line 5, and we'll open it, and... Um, Oh, this is the pickle one. Sorry, I'm actually looking at the. I think I'm yeah, looking at the wrong one. We're gonna look at that one later. Same thing though. It, it starts out the same. Uh, well, actually, slightly different. This one I set it equal to an empty dictionary, and then I go load. Um, we can actually change that. So. Um, you know, like, look look at this one. That, this one returns the dictionary, right? So we, um, we're, we're essentially doing the same thing, but slightly different. This is the pickle one. This is the one that's not pickle. Um, in this one, we're populating D here. Now we can change this to match the behavior of the other program, probably a bit better because it's returning something and in this one this 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 function load isn't returning something so let's modify it here um, let's just say here uh, d equals em oops empty dictionary and then here we'll populate d and then um, here we'll say uh, d equals empty dictionary again if 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 um, this is not true if the file doesn't exist let's create an empty dictionary and then now after here let's go return D and so essentially if the file exists it creates the empty dictionary then we iterate through the file line by line split on the comma on line 8 and then populate the dictionary with L0 being the first item in the list where we split the line and then L1 is the second item which is the phone number right 
So the key is the name here, and the value is the phone number. By the way, we're also taking a slice of that, getting rid of the new line character on the end. That's what the slice negative one is for. So it goes from the beginning all the way, but not including the last character, which is a new line. So, I mean, there's a, perhaps that line doesn't look great. I mean, I could have replaced it with something like this. I could say name equals uh, L zero, and then I could say, uh, uh, you know, phone number, P number equals, um, or I could, instead of calling it, how about we call it phone, uh, or how about call it telly number, telly num, telephone number equals L1, but let's take that slice, right, get rid of the new line character at the end, and then we could simply just change this, right? Now we could say here, this is telenum, and this is name. So perhaps this is like better because when you look at this, you understand that the key is the name of the person and the telephone number is the value of the dictionary. So yeah, I, I think I like this better. You know, sometimes people think, oh, it's cooler to write a program with has less lines. That's not true. It's, not, it's readability is important, and I think this is more readable because the variable names are descriptive. So I like that better. And you know, like I did before, you could also assign telephone number and name on this line too with a comma, as we as we did in a previous lesson. Uh, nonetheless, if the file does not exist then make d empty, right? start from scratch, tell the user the phone book is empty, and then after either of those situations, whether you have the file or not, return d. So now let's go back here and let's change this and let's just say d equals load. That's, that's much better. I like that better. Okay. Uh, next line, now we're going to go into a while true loop, and we're going to say x equals, and x is uh, simply the letter that they're going to type. Do you want to add, delete, find, or quit? So ADFQ, and I'm specifically giving instructions to the user to type in a capital letter, but that's okay if they don't. Uh, I'm going to change it into a capital letter on line 46. Then if it's an A, I'm going to call add. If it's a D, call delete. If it's an F, call find. And if it's a Q, which is, which is basically quit, then I'm going to save the dictionary and break out of the while true loop. So the only time I'm, this, is, this program is going to end, to end is if I hit Q, and then after saving, I'm going to break out of this while true loop. And when I break out, it just says, thanks for using phone book and program is over, okay? Let's go take a look at the functions now for the add, delete, find, and quit, which is another way of saying save. So explicitly, I don't have a specific save. It will just automatically save when you quit the program. Uh, let's go take a look at add now. So here is add. Okay, uh, add takes no arguments, um, but we are going to ask for the person's name. So that's an input. Then we're going to ask for their telephone number. Then we're going to add an entry into D with name as the key and num as the value. Now listen, this works. This works because D is not a local variable. And the reason it's not a local variable, you notice I don't have D equals in this function. So when Python looks for the, this D here on line 27, 
it doesn't find a local copy so it'll go and use the global copy from line that was created on line 43. You could, so like, you know, th this is kind of an odd, uh, you know, we've, we've already covered functions before, but this is kind of an odd peculiarity of Python uh, in that you can access variables that are outside of a function. You can't do this in other languages like uh, C++ or C and stuff like that. Python has this peculiar ability to access variables outside of functions. However, listen, you know, um, we can be more explicit when we call add. So if we come here and we explicitly send D, which was created here, to it, that'll work too. So now all I have to do, so you know, maybe to prepare your, your uh, programming education for other programming languages, we could come here to add and put that D in there. Mind you, listen, I got to specify here, please, once again, I know I've taught functions before, but don't be tricked into thinking those two variables need to be the same. They do not. So if I, let's say, for example, if I did this a capital D, different variable name, that's totally OK now. Because here, when I call add, on line 48, I'm sending little d, which is this d from line 43, right? It doesn't matter if the variables are the same or different. Okay, they're both going to refer to the same object in memory, which is a dictionary. Okay, so that looks good. I'm happy with that. Uh, and we all know how to add things to a dictionary. That's the way you do it. Okay? Line 27. Next, let's move on. Uh, let's go take a look at delete. Again, delete does not take a, let's change it. Let's send D. And so now, uh, here is delete. We're not sending anything here. And um, here, we're actually going D.pop, okay? D.pop is actually doing two things here. Now, by the way, listen, what if the person says delete a name, a phone number that doesn't exist? So th this would actually throw an error, and so line 32 would cause the program to crash. So we need to check for that. And we do that in line 31, if name in D. Okay, or we could do, as I've said here in the comment, if, no, that's old from Python 2. Uh, that's, yeah, okay, that's better. <laughs> Python 2 day, Python 2 is bye-bye. So we can say here, or if uh, name in d.keys, and there's nothing there. Okay, that's better. Yeah, or if name, well, get rid of the or, because that, maybe confusing. You can replace that line with if name in d.keys. Or you could leave it as if name in d. That'll, that'll work as well. Okay. Um, so we're just checking for the key, ex if that key exists. And if it does exist, then print the name and print the phone number because when you pop a key value, out, sorry, if you when you pop a key value pair, it will return uh, the value. Okay. However, once again, I'm not. I don't have a local variable d, so it works even if I don't pass d to it. But I'm going to change this behavior, and I'm going to do this because when I called it here, I modified this line, and I'm passing the dictionary to the function explicitly. I'm not relying on Python's peculiar ability to access variables outside of the function. So uh, yeah, there you go. That looks good. So essentially, I want you to know something here. This pop here, where I'm deleting that key, and key value pair entry specified by the key name, that's doing two things. It's returning the value and deleting that key pair. 
okay? Uh, and obviously, if it's not in there, we're just going to give them a, an error message saying that person's not in the phone book. Done. Next one, find. Okay, let's do it again. Let's pass D to find as well. Let's modify the program a little bit. This time, we're saying, hey, listen, uh, what's the name of the person's, that phone number that you're looking for? And again, we say if name in D, this one has to be now be, oh, this is going to change too. I forgot about that. If that's a capital D, this has to be a capital D. Okay? And now we'll have to change this. And we'll say if name in D, print D name, which is the telephone number. And if it's not in the dictionary, that name does not exist. Okay? So there's, a, there's the lookup. And dictionaries are amazingly fast at doing lookups. Even if there were millions of names in here, uh, it, would, it would find them very quickly. Dictionaries, that's what they're built for, is doing lookups for the, between a key and a value. Uh, however, there, you know, there is one thing about this uh, phone book application which is not really realistic, and I don't like that about it, but we're not going to change it, and that is, in a real phone book application, it's nice when you can just start typing a name partially and it'll start uh, whittling down the possibilities. In this one, you actually have to type the person's name exactly. So if you make a spelling mistake in the person's name, it's not going to work. So you have to get the person, you have to be precise. And you know, real phone books are more powerful than that. You can type in a substring, or even if you get like the spelling slightly wrong, real phone books will usually guess and figure out what you want. We're, we don't have that type of logic in this program, and we're not going to add it at this level. Um, so let's move on. Uh, that was find, and now save. And save is the uh, I think it's the it's a cool one. Let's also change this. Uh, to pass D to save as well. So we're going to pass the dictionary to the save function. So we're going to modify that. Let's go up to save and there it is. Okay, so let's put in a capital D here again just so that it's a different variable name. Uh, doesn't have to be, like I said. Uh, we, we can use the same variable. It makes no difference. Um, F equals open sysargv1 now we're going to open it for writing, and we're going to iterate through the keys, and, and now we're going to write the key plus uh, the value, D key. Now, notice that the phone number is actually stored as a string. So not only is the name a... Uh, you know, maybe I could do this. Perhaps this would, might look better. If I said, uh, how about I change this variable to name, and then we'll go uh, telephone, tele number is equal to uh, D name. So there's the lookup. And then now we can change this to uh, tele num. And we'll change this to name. Probably a better looking. Um, we don't. You don't have to do that. The way I did it before was fine. But um, yeah. Now notice I'm doing concatenation here, okay, with the plus, and I'm and I'm separating them with that comma because I want to be a comma separated values. And at the end of the line, I do have to add the new line. Okay, if I do this, if I was to rewrite this, uh, no pun intended, this line again using an F string, I would do this. Just so that you get a little bit more experience with F strings, I would say name, comma, telenum, backslash n, close the string and close the write function call. 
So both of those will work. Let's go with the second one right now. And um, we'll comment out the first one. So whatever you're more comfortable with. If you like string concatenation on line 22, or if you prefer uh, F strings on line 23. Okay? So, yeah, let's close that. Let's, let's comment that we can only have one of those, right? We can't have both. And now I'm going to close the file. And you notice I didn't use with open. I'm just, I have to manually close the file now because I didn't use with open as F. So uh, that's it. I think that's the, that is the, uh, that's the whole thing. So let's uh, run this guy. Now we can't hit F5. I'm going to have to save this. I'm going to have to now open a terminal and I will go to that directory. Uh, okay. And so there's my file. It's actually this one right here. And now if I run that, Python 3, let me make this slightly bigger. Python 3 uh, phone book with error checking dot py. And oh, before I run this, actually, uh, let's take a look at pbook2. OK, oh, no, that one is, let's take a look at pbook. Yeah. OK, so let's take a look at pbook again. Yeah, so pbook2 was the, the pickled one. And the original pbook is the comma-separated value one. So right now, we're, we're looking at uh, comma-separated values. So there you go. Um, we've already got two phone numbers in there. So let's run it like that. So I'll just go pbook now. And so that's the command line argument number one. And when I run this, Oh, great. Uh, we get an error. Oh, yes. Wonderful. So when I first wrote this file, uh, I'm mixing tabs and spaces. So let's go back here. Let's go up to view. Or was it document? Yeah, it's document. Replace tabs with spaces. And let's save it. And now let's go back. And let's try it again. OK. Woohoo! Works now. Uh, yeah, side note, don't use tabs. Always use four spaces uh, to represent a tab. Okay, that's the proper way to do things in Python. So uh, let's do a lookup. Let's find, uh, how about John's phone number? Yep, there you go. Let's do another lookup and let's look up, uh, I don't know, how about Bill's phone number? Oh no, Bill doesn't exist. Perfect, okay, it didn't fail. And let's add a person's phone number. How about, uh, let's add Bill now. And his phone number is 222-3333. Excellent. Um, and now we could, how about let's delete uh, Mr. Ark's phone number. Actually, let's just try deleting a person that doesn't exist. That person is not in the phone book. All right, let's try deleting Mr. Ark now. Yay, OK. Mr. Ark deleted. And um, what else can we do? So we've done delete, we've done add, we've done find. Now let's do a quit. Here we go. Q for quit. OK, done. Now let's go take a look at the phone book, just visually with uh, dumping it to the screen. And you'll notice Mr. Ark is gone, and Bill has been added. So. It's good. It's working OK. All right, we're back. And so let's go over the solution to the other solution, which was the one using pickle. So in this case, I'm not going to be using a comma separated value for my uh, storage. Instead, I'm going to be using pickle. So here I am importing pickle on the first line. And um, it's essentially the same thing. 
okay? Uh, notice I'm not passing D to all these functions. Well, I am passing D to some of them, uh, but I didn't pass it to the, uh, the load function, uh, which is okay because it's returning uh, D anyways. Um, and uh, let's see here. Yeah, what's different? Well, this time I'm on line five. I am opening the file for reading, but uh, as a binary. So not as a text file. And I need to do that with pickle. So not just R, but RB. And now I'm going pickle.load F. And then I'm closing the file. And same as before. Save is a little different too. Now I'm going to use pickle.dump and I'm going to dump the dictionary into the file f and I'm opening it as sysargv and again I'm opening it as with writing in binary format and uh, that's pretty much the same the add is the same the delete is the same the find is the same so the only ones that were different were the load and the save Okay, and so if I try running this file now, if I go Python 3 um, and I type in phone book error checking using pickle and I go p book 2, um, that's the one that's uh, the pickled version. And so now, let's find, I think I had one saved as Mr. Arc. Yeah, so there is um, that telephone number. We can add one now. Uh, how about Mary's phone number is, uh, I don't know, 666-6666. And so um, we could now even, let's say, delete Mr. Arc. And let's add another one. Uh, we can add Kate. Her number is 333-3333. And so now we will quit. And um, thanks for using phone book. Now, if we actually dump this to the screen, it's not really, well, we can kind of make out what it looks like, but it's not super human readable. But you can see that the data is stored there. Uh, and if we started it up again, like that, and then ran it and said, let's find Kate's phone number, it's going to give it to us. OK? So that was the uh, phone book solution using pickle here and uh, the one before we use comma separated values okay we're back uh, so the um, next topic that I wanted to go through with you guys is importing functions from other files so usually when you write a function in Python you include the function at the top of your code after your imports. But there is a way to import a module, which is like basically a module is, think of it as like another file. So here I have a, uh, I have here, right here, I have a, a, a program called my mod and so you, you see the name right there my mod .py. and in this function I have one uh, function called foo here is the uh, doc string triple quotes 
first line of the function. It says this is the foo function doc string. It describes the function, although it's not really describing it because in this case, the function really doesn't do much. Uh, it's just printing one line of code. Okay, so x is something that is passed to the function, and it says this function prints x. That's it. So very rudimentary, just as an example. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, I, I have some more lines here. Let's comment these out. Okay. In fact, I will comment all of this out right now. And we'll, we'll kind of explain what that stuff is later. Uh, but essentially, um, if I save this as my mod, now I can run, I can actually like call this function, or I can write another code here simply by going import my mod. Notice though that I don't say import mymod.py I simply go import mymod um, many students actually fall into a trap in Python inadvertently by accident when they're learning Python sometimes it happens when we use the random library sometimes it'll happen if we use the math library uh, what students do is they will save a file in their directory called random.py and then they'll say because they'll say well I, I want to see how you know I want to test how random numbers work so they'll go into the file and then they'll type in import random to get like some type of a random number generator going well guess what it fails and they'll scratch their head going, how come this isn't working? Well, the pitfall is that you don't name any of your files the same name as a Python library, like random, or math, or sys, or OS, or any other library you intend on importing. Because if you do, now uh, it's not going to work because you're not going to import the library that is with the operating system in Python you're going to be importing your own file which surely does not contain the methods that you want I'm smiling because this has happened numerous numerous times so um, here this function called mymod simply has, if you can ignore all the comments below, it just has one function called foo. So let's actually import this function in this file call, called calling mymod. And let's now execute that function by going mymod.foo and we'll pass it the number 9. So if I run this now, watch what happens. It says this function prints 9. So everything's good. So essentially what I've done is I have written my own library. Oh, that's so cool. You can write your own libraries? Yeah. And look how easy it is. All you do is you put the function in a different file, call it whatever you want, as long as it's in the same directory, you can then import that file and you have access to all the functions in that file. Yes? But here is something that is going to be dangerous. So watch this. Let me now uncomment this line actually let me uncomment this one 
let's comment this one up. And let's say uh, print, the name of this program is, OK? Question, ask yourself, if you import the function foo, if you import my mod, so you're importing all the functions that are in my mod. There's only one function, by the way, in this case. It's foo. Then if I run this, first, OK, wait, I got to save this first. So let's go uh, Control S here. And now let me go back here. And now let me actually run this program again. Ready? Watch. So now it says this function prints 9 which is you know okay so that comes from from here right uh hold on yeah so this function prints nine but before that it printed the name of this program is my mod but now you might say well i don't want to run this library i can i can change this by the way so maybe it might help if I change the name of this file. Let's change, let's go, let's change, because I think I might have my mod too many times. Let's change this as to uh, library, okay, dot py. Hopefully there's no Python, uh, just double check, I, I don't, I don't want to fall victim. I can't honestly remember. Python 3 import library. Yeah, okay, so there's nothing called library. I didn't think there was, but there's a lot of Python um, libraries. So I'm going to call this library.py. Okay, then here I'm going to import library. So now I'm going to, now down here, I'll go library.foo. Maybe that's uh, maybe that's better. Is that because maybe I, sometimes I think in my head maybe it's confusing if you keep seeing my mod my mod in both the the uh, in the in what you're importing and what you're calling it from. So uh, okay, so I want to reiterate once again in this video that both of these files I changed their names just so that it was more clear because I thought having the same name in both the library and the calling uh, file if they're the same I thought it might be confusing so I'm gonna call this one the library where the function exists here foo and then this one is the call where on line 8 I'm actually calling the function foo from the library module okay module um, what's interesting though with the output in this case so if I run this right is that this first line the name of this program is library where is that happening and that's happening here on line 10 so in fact What's really happening is we're not simply grabbing the, the function foo. The truth of the matter is by importing a file, you're actually running the whole file. So, you, okay, like the functions don't run unless you call them, but line 10 is not a function. Line 10 is simply part of this Python program. And yet, I'm not calling line 10 explicitly. And yet it's still running. Why is that? The answer is because right here on line 3, when you import a Python file, it runs it. Okay? Now you might say, oh, but I don't want it to run the Python program. 
in the library module. I just want those functions so I can call them down here. How do I do that? Well, one possible solution would be you could say, well, simply don't type anything other than the functions in there. But then you might say, well, what if I have code to, let's say, test my function or something like that? The way you do it is you use this magical line, 13. This line 13 is known in the Python world. It, it is a uh, very specific and very commonly used line. It says, if under under name under under equals equals in quotes now under under main under under quote I know it looks like a long and ugly line. Like why do you have all those underscores? Well, the answer is that these underscores are actually special variables in Python that exist for all programs. Uh, and we're, at, we're, we're testing it here. We're saying, is the name of this program main? So why is that important? Well, I'll tell you. When you run a program, the name of the program, so notice that there's two, there's a difference here. This right here, this first part here, that's a variable. That's not a string. Under, under, name, under, under, or I'm going to say that faster. In the Python world, it's called dunder, double under. So dunder, name, dunder. You see, did you hear how I said that? Dunder, name, dunder is, be, is a variable which is being compared to a string. Notice that the main is not a variable because it's in quotes. So the main part is a string. When you run a Python program, the name variable will equal main. When you import, on the other hand, when you import a Python file, the, the dunder name dunder variable will not be equal to main. It will equal uh, in this case, it would be library. So now you can do a check. So in other words, here, let me, let me show it to you like this. Uh, let me open a terminal here. Okay. And let me run that file called library. In fact, let me actually, before I run it, I should undo this. So now, watch what happens when I run this file. Okay, ready? Let's actually comment this out right now. Let me save it. Okay. Now I'm I'm not gonna. Um, actually, I can just hit F5. I don't need to run it from the terminal. I'm just gonna run it through Genie. Here we go. Okay, ready? Let's take a look at the. Uh, so when I run this, what happens? None of this gets executed because it's all comments. The function doesn't get executed unless we call it. So now it comes down to this if statement. And guess what? The if statement is true. So, and, and I'll show you why it's true in a minute. But now, now that it goes in, it says this is being run in, instead of my mod, maybe we should call it, we should change this. We should say library. Okay? And then it says foo5. Right? We're calling foo5. So when you call it, it says this function prints x. There it is. This function here. Let's let's run it one more time because we changed it, right? So let's save it and let's run it again. Actually, let's take let's <coughs> undo this there okay so let's run it again and now here we go f5 notice this first line here 
That's this line, line number nine. What is under under name? It's dunder main dunder. That's what that variable equals. And because that variable equals, now the if statement is true. Now that the if statement is true, we execute this print line. It says this is being run in library. Perfect. And now it says this function prints 5. So we call foo and we send it 5. Now what happens after that? After that comes the doc string. So we're printing the doc string, which is this is the function doc string. We don't, we don't, that's not important at this point because I think we've done doc strings before. Uh, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, so we've done doc strings before. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take out this doc string altogether because uh, I just want to focus on what we're learning. So, so now, essentially, as I said, uh, that's basically what the output is. So line 7 executes, and then line 12 executes, and then line 13 executes. Perfect. Okay, you guys got that? So now, watch what I'm going to do. Okay, so uh, yeah, I took out that first line because that... Uh, this line here, um, well, let's click here. That, that, that line is only for Linux and doesn't have any meaning in uh, Windows. So let's just delete it. Um, and we're always running our programs uh, by prepending Python 3 in any case. So let's now try to run this program now. Okay, so this program will import library and it will call the foo function. Watch what happens. What is this first output, this line right here? Why is library getting printed out? Well, guess what? It's line number seven. So line number seven is running. Okay. That means, so in fact, I, I changed it, right? I said, look what I did, just so that it, it's more explicit. I can delete this, go like this, save it, and let's try it again. Go back, F5, run this. Now it says, the name of this program is library. So notice, the name of this program, that line is running. Line 8 runs when I import. Where does that line run? It runs on line 3. Okay? Um, so this line 3 here runs this line 8. Because like I said, when you import a file, you run the file. It's like running the file. But notice that this did not run. This if statement is false. Why is it false? Because if you'll notice, name does not equal main anymore. It's equal to library. So therefore, this, this if statement is false. So what's the purpose of this then? I'll tell you, usually what you would do is you would not have this line here, okay? And look, we can even take this one out. It's just a comment here. I'm saying if the built-in name variable is main, then when I say is equal to, I meant as a string, right? then run the uh, then the if statement below will will be true and it'll run but let's just take it all out essentially what now happens is if i save this and i come back here and i run this program again look what happens the only thing that runs is the function so the function is here 
this does not run. This stuff gets skipped. And that's exactly what you want. You, you don't want to run this whole Python library.py file when you import it. You just want to have access to the functions so that you can call them like this, library.foo, and send it some argument, right? So now you can type as much stuff here in this if statement as you like. That anything in that if statement is not going to be executed if you import the file. On the other hand, right? On the other hand, if you choose to run this file, this this file here, the file called library, if if I hit F5 here, notice what happens. I not only have access to the function foo, but this everything inside the if statement is going to run because now main does name dunder name dunder does equal dunder main dunder so the if statement is true so in other words I'll say this again because I, I I know some people have difficulty understanding this if I run the library file directly the if statement is true and this will run. If I import the library file, then this if statement is false. And this will not, these, these lines 11 and 12 will not be executed. Does that seem clear now? Hopefully. Okay, so now that we have uh, described the way in which to import a Python file and how to uh, call the functions usually you know using the import statement there's actually uh, a couple of different ways you can import actually like well three different ways in this example here that you can import libraries this is the most generic one where you simply say import the library name uh, import the module and then you type the module name first and then you go dot and then you call the function so in other words notice that this function is not called library.foo this function is called foo and yet when we call it when we import the file we go import library but then when we call it we say library.foo this is important because this actually allows us to make our own foo function here and we'll say uh, okay so now if you'll notice I can call both foo functions so if I run this, look what happens. If I run this, it says this function prints 9. That's not from this file. That's, that's this call, line 12, library.foo. Notice line 12 works perfectly too. I have another function called foo, but notice I'm not putting library dot in front of it. You see how that works? See how it's, you can have two functions with the same name? But there is no uh, problem with the two because one of them I have to put the module name before it. Okay? I can also actually, sometimes uh, library names or module names, I'm using those two words interchangeably. Uh, sometimes their name is very long. Like the word library isn't particularly long. But what if it was something like uh, my super duper awesome library from 2020 or something like that, a super long name. You don't want to type that every time you import. Now, obviously, if you're anywhere sane, you're not going to use a, a function, I mean, a, a file name that long. But I'm being, I'm exaggerating. 
So what you can do sometimes is in order to make your typing less when you're coding, you can actually do uh, something like this. You can go comment that out and you can just go import library as lib. Or I mean even you could just say L. And so now, so I'm, so I'm importing the library as L. This doesn't change anything, it just simply makes it less typing. So for example now, this isn't going to work. I have to uncomment this and now I have to go l.foo. So instead of typing library.foo, I just go l.foo. And there is still no problem here running these two. If I, hit, if I run this again, uh, there you go. The order is switched, but it's still totally fine. Line 13 happens first and then 14. Great. See that? No problem. And less typing. I actually like this. That's kind of nice. And usually, you, the, the, sh the short abbreviation is something that is um, recognizable. Maybe one letter is too short, but I could change it to, let's say, lib. And then here, I would just type in uh, lib. And then if I ran that, it's the same thing. And chances are, if you see the word lib in your code there on line 14, you're going to know that it's in reference to the library import. OK? So there is another way to import stuff as well. And uh, that is these two ways here. So in this case, I'm going from. Notice I'm using the word from here. This is different. In the lines above, I always use import first. Now I'm using from library import foo. Now watch. Let's take this line out and let's see if this is going to run. Uh, so notice here that it says missing one required positional argument. So if I if I said foo, you know, nine again, if I ran this, that works, but uh, wait. How come I can't call this foo? I can't anymore. Because of the way I've imported it, now this foo is no longer accessible. OK? So in other words, as Python reads, let me get rid of this first line again. Python reads function definitions going top down. So in this case, uh, it's going to read this, and then it's going to do this import. If I put the import first, watch what happens. Let me go uh, Control X and I let me put this at the top. Control V. So from library import foo, and now watch what's going to happen. It's not going to work because it's going to say, "Ready? I'm pretty sure." Let's try it. Yeah, see, it takes says foo takes zero positional arguments, one given. So in other words, before I couldn't call the one from. So now if I do this, it'll work. See, foo from call. So now, so essentially this is what's going on. Line one happens first. So I grab the foo from library from here. Then line four happens next. Now I overwrite my previous foo with this one. And so now I can't access the one from the library. See? So essentially, this isn't a great way to do stuff. OK? The other one which I wanted to show you is this is, a, this is essentially the same thing, except, so let's take this one and put it up here. And let me take this one out and uncomment this. From library, now I'm not being explicit anymore. Oh, I think I misspelled something here. It's supposed to say import. So from library import foo is specific. In other words, if this library uh, file had another function called boo, OK, and um, let's say it goes print boo. Well, guess what? If I did it this way, the, in the first line, line number one, I don't have access to the boo function. 
I only have access to the foo function from that file. However, if I do it as line two, where I say import star, star means everything. So now, watch. Uh, I'm going to have to uncomment this because of the order. So, um, yeah, well, the, the sad thing about this is watch what happens. This is going to work now. Oh, no. Uh, it says boo is not defined. Okay. Uh, let me think why that is. From library import star. Oh, right. I forgot to save it. Thank you. Okay. So, let's run this again. And yeah, notice though, the really sad thing about this is the foo is being called from line 4 and the boo is being called from the other file. Okay? On the other hand, if I comment this out and I put in an argument here, like a 5, and I run this, now both functions are being called from the other file library. Okay? So in essence, I don't have to say import boo and foo. I'm just saying um, import from library import everything, import star. By the way, I just want to state for, the, for, for all my students everywhere, line number two is not a good way of programming. And the reason why it's not is because it's, for one thing, you can see the problem that you're going to run into, right? You can't have two function names with the same. And also the other thing is that it's not clear as to where this function's coming from. So when your program's really long and you're accessing stuff like this, it's, it's, uh, it's much cleaner to say something like lib.foo and lib.boo. And in this case, uh, you would simply go, you would use this one, right? You'd say, uh, let's comment this one out. So that's the way I think I would prefer to do it. You go import library as lib, and then you can, and then it's very clear down here where these functions are coming from. It's from that library. So if you ever want to go back and say, hmm, I want to change how those functions work, Oh yeah, it's not in this file, it's from lib. Okay, let me go to the lib and, and check that out. Oh, okay, I can change it here, and then it'll, it'll work properly in this, in this file. By the way, just to let you know, I want you to understand this too. You can actually import multiple things explicitly as well. Uh, for example, if I went like this, and I went, um, let's comment this out, and I went uh, from library import foo comma boo, and now that should work. But I got to get rid of the lib in front here. If I run this, yeah, it works fine. This function prints 5 and boo. So uh, you can, in other words, the reason why I'm showing you this is that you can actually import multiple. Uh, let's, say there was, let's say there was three functions in here and not two. And I didn't want, the th I didn't want to have access to the third one. I could just import two of them explicitly. But once again, I'm still going to say these first two lines are not the greatest way of importing things in Python. Uh, either do it like this, where you use the keyword as, or uh, use just simply import. And, and in that case, you would have to type the whole thing. So if you're going to use line 3, you would go lib. If you're going to use line uh, 4, then you'd, go f you'd have to type out the full name. OK? So you guys are now experts on uh, understanding how to import functions. And once again, I, I do want to stress this. This if under, if this line here, number 11, line 11, is extremely important in Python. You'll see it all over the place. Okay? In fact, it's so common that most Pythonistas, as they call them, programmers who code in Python, will start their program off with line 11. Just in case they want to use those functions 
in another program. They don't want to have to copy paste them. They'll simply just import the file and they don't have to worry about anything else in the file being executed. Because now this is not only a file I can run individually by running this file directly, but it's also a file that I can import. And nothing in this file will run because of this if statement. But I will have access to all the functions from another file. Okay? Alright, so I have a little assignment for you. Why don't you now create, uh, don't copy exactly what I have here. Make your own function names. Don't call them call and don't call them library. Call them something different because it's important that your brain processes this information with different variables, different f use different function names, different file names, and I want you to make one file that's going to have the functions, and I want you to make the other file that's going to import those functions and call them. Okay, so make two files. It's up to you what you call them, but don't call them the same names as I have in this example. Pause the video and give it a shot. Okay, well, I hope you were successful in creating your own files with different names and different functions. And that's going to be the end of this video. Thanks for watching. See you next period. Bye.